Good afternoon and thank you for joining us on this Facebook Live. We're here with Dr. Larry Anderson and today we're talking about myeloma and CAR T <coughs> therapy. Um, feel free to uh, submit any of your questions in the thread. Uh, we cannot comment on patients or um, specific questions, but if you keep it somewhat broad, we'll try to, we'll try to answer those questions as thoroughly as possible. Um, so Dr. Anderson, I guess we'll just start by asking you, what do you specialize in? All right, great question. So I specialize in plasma cell disorders, which are basically bone marrow cancers of a cell from the immune system called a plasma cell. The, my, the main subtype would be multiple myeloma, which is the most common plasma cell disorder. Um, and I also treat other plasma cell disorders, including Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia and amyloidosis. So those are probably the most common three disorders um, that I would treat. Um, so I'm basically, there are two of us here at UT Southwestern that specialize in only plasma cell disorders, and I think we're the only two in the region that uh, do so. Okay, so can you tell me a little bit about why you're passionate about working in this um, field? Yeah, so multiple myeloma, um, when I started in my training, really had a not great outcomes, and we didn't have a lot uh, to use, uh, but during my fellowship, there were clinical trials being done with new drugs that, that were just be starting to be approved when I was uh, a fellow in training, and it really started revolutionizing the way we can treat these bone marrow cancers. And since then, roughly 11 drugs have been approved uh, for the treatment of multiple myeloma alone. Um, so it's made it really exciting, all the things that we can use to treat these patients and get them in remission and keep them in remission. And we've seen survivals um, go from, uh, you know, three years to um, 10 years plus uh, okay. in these patients that, um, that, that now that we have all of these other treatments available. So what are some of those treatments? So we have um, a lot of different categories, but s some of the ones that we routinely use uh, would be IMIDs or immunomodulatory um, drugs, which are pills that you take um, that have multiple different ways that they attack the myeloma, okay. one of which would be activating the immune system, but others um, affecting pathways that the myeloma cells in the bone marrow are, are depending on to survive. Um, typically, we would combine that with a proteasome inhibitor um, and, and a steroid called dexamethasone. So most patients these days are getting <clears throat> a combination of three okay. drugs or triplet therapy, um, whether they're newly di diagnosed or relapsed. And then there are currently trials um, ongoing looking at what we call quadruplet uh, therapies. Now that we have some really um, exciting non-toxic, non-chemo therapies um, such as monoclonal antibodies like daratumumab that we can potentially combine with these other drugs and help to uh, get the myeloma in even deeper remissions that hopefully last longer. Okay. Um, well, we do have a couple questions coming in. One of them is, what is myeloma and how does it differ from other types of cancer? <clears throat> yeah, so myeloma is a, a bone marrow cancer of a cell called a plasma cell. So we all have plasma cells in our bone marrow. They're part of our immune system. They normally make antibodies and help fight off infections. But over the patient's lifetime, one of those plasma cells develops several genetic mutations. We don't have any known cause of myeloma, okay. so we don't really know why, what triggers those mutations in most cases, um, but oh, it probably takes several decades, so that's why the majority or the average age of multiple myeloma is in the upper 60s. Uh, it probably takes many years to develop those mutations in that one plasma cell in their bone marrow, <clears throat> and those mutations then cause that plasma cell to start dividing uncontrollably and take over the bone marrow. And what that causes is it crowds out the normal bone marrow, so the pa many patients get anemic because their bone marrow doesn't produce red blood cells like it normally does. And it can also activate bone-eating cells called osteoclasts that cause holes in the bones or lytic lesions. And so patients may get thinning of the bones or Swiss cheese type holes in the middle of their bones or fractures. Uh, so anemia and bone lesions are one of the two most common things that patients with multiple myeloma may have when they're diagnosed. Um, also those plasma cells uh, that are in the bone marrow, <clears throat> because they're all derived from one original cell, they all make the same exact 
antibody or immunoglobulin. And so when we test the blood of those patients, most of them will have uh, what we call a monoclonal protein or monoclonal immunoglobulin in their blood work that shows up on a test called protein electrophoresis <clears throat> that can then uh, help diagnose those patients okay. with myeloma. Okay. And then we can also use that monoclonal protein to help um, determine if those patients are responding to treatment as we kill off the plasma cells that monoclonal protein levels should drop and if they're relapsing it would be going up. Um, so oh, about 90 percent of the patients will have a monoclonal protein. Um, about 10 percent of patients may only have um, a, a light, something called a light chain. So it's a very lightweight uh, protein, a very small part of that immunoglobulin and without the other big part of the immunoglobulin. And so if we do just the electrophoresis, it may be missed. So now the complete workup for patients that we're suspecting myeloma in would be including an assay of the blood called the serum-free light chain assay. Okay. And so that'll pick up another 10% of patients that have light chain only myeloma. Okay. Um, there are about 1% one or, 1 or so of patients with myeloma whose plasma cells don't make any of those proteins, and it's called non-secretory, and those are very difficult to follow. You have to do advanced imaging and serial bone marrow biopsies to know if they're responding to treatment, but the majority of patients will have that marker in the blood that we can follow, so we don't have to do biopsies um, okay. all the time, but the original diagnosis will usually require a bone marrow biopsy to determine okay. how many plasma cells are in the bone marrow and what genetic mutations those cells have. Yeah, so that's multiple myeloma. So it sounds like uh, diagnosis has come quite a long way mm -hmm. um, in terms of how it's evolved. Um, we do have a couple more questions coming in. First, uh, Bill says, thank you for all you do, Dr. Anderson. My pleasure. Um, and then what treatments are available for myeloma? I know <coughs> we just covered that, so maybe now would be a good time to kind of go into CAR mm -hmm. T therapy yep. and what that is. Yeah, so I can, I'll, I'll just, I'll touch on both. Um, I mentioned we have, you know, Three drug therapies are very standard. I did want to just comment on, um, you know, we sort of distinguish the treatment of myeloma based on whether or not that patient will be going on to a stem cell transplant or not. So stem cell transplants are still pretty commonly used in the, um, right after that three drug therapy uh, called induction therapy, then we would consider moving on to a stem cell transplant in patients that are younger and fitter and able to go through that. Um, there's not a specific age cutoff, but generally over 75 is um, when a lot of patients may not want to do that stem cell transplant because it increases the, the toxicity. Um, mm -hmm. But in those patients that um, aren't doing a stem cell transplant, we also have just recently got FDA approved um, the use of that monoclonal antibody daratumumab combined with the imid, lenalidomide, and dexamethasone. So now we can use monoclonal antibody up front in those patients to get deeper, longer remissions. Is that, <clears throat> was that the pill or is that That's the... A, it's an, right now it's an IV okay. infusion okay. of that monoclonal antibody. Um, Hopefully later in the year, uh, we're waiting to see if the FDA will approve the subcutaneous shot version, we'll, which will make it a lot easier. But right now, it's an IV infusion weekly for two months, and then every other week okay. for four months, and is then it monthly. Is a subcutaneous shot? Is that just it, a standard for the average person? Is that just a standard shot? Or? Yeah, yeah, but okay. it, it would have to be okay. given in a, essentially a oncology or chemo infusion center where okay. the nurse would okay. administer it and watch for side effects. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to mention that that monoclonal antibody therapy is approved up front for those, uh, especially the non-transplant patients. And we're waiting on some more data that looks very promising um, with that quadruplet therapy in the transplant eligible patients. Uh, but let's say the patients have gone through a few lines of therapy and their myeloma has come back. Um, one of the things that's most exciting right now in the field of myeloma research, as you mentioned, is CAR T cell therapy. and um, I'll just mention briefly what that means. So CAR stands for chimeric antigen receptor T cells. So if you recall from Greek mythology, a chimera <clears throat> is a monster that has a head of a lion and the body of a, uh, another monster and a tail of a dragon, something like that. And so in this case, we have the head of a monoclonal antibody that's on the outside of the receptor and the tail of the T cell receptor. And so it signals to that T cell to kill the, two, the cancer cell that it's binding. And so these CAR receptors can target whichever antigen you're looking for. Um, in myeloma, most of the studies have targeted um, an antigen or a target called 
BCMA, which stands for B-cell maturation antigen, which is present on almost every myeloma patient's cancer cells, um, and, and also on normal plasma cells. So it's, it's specific for plasma cells, uh, and it doesn't um, cause recognition of other organs like the heart and the lungs and other okay. things. So it's pretty specific for plasma cells. Um, so these, what, hap what has to happen to get CAR T-cell therapy, um, the, um, the T cells are taken out of the blood of the patient, usually with the same kind of machine that we use for a stem cell collection okay. called apheresis. Um, and then that blood with the T cells enriched in it are, are shipped off to a company, um, whichever company is running the trial or making the CAR T cells. Um, and those T cells are then um, grown up uh, to millions of cells uh, in, in the lab and a gene, that gene for that CAR receptor is inserted into them, often with a virus, sometimes uh, other methods. And then after that gene is inserted into them, those T cells are expanded into multiple millions of cells, tested for um, activity, frozen, shipped back to where we uh, have the patient, and then they can be um, infused into the patient. Okay. It generally takes at least three weeks and usually more like a month uh, to make these CAR T cells. Uh, right now, there are already CAR T cells FDA approved for the treatment of patients with relapsed large cell lymphoma and acute lymphoblastic leukemia or ALL, especially for the younger patients with ALL. Okay. Uh, so those are already being used as routine care for those patients. In multiple myeloma, right now they're still undergoing clinical trials to determine how and when and where to use those best. Okay, so in, in very simple terms, it, it's <clears throat> kind of reinserting more um, fighter cells to mm -hmm. specifically target that type of cancer, correct? Correct, it's, it's basically hijacking the patient's own immune system and forcing it to recognize their cancer and to kill their cancer cells. Okay, okay. And with that treatment, I mean, we've had patients on trials here with myeloma that had failed multiple lines of therapy and have um, gone into beautiful remissions uh, with those cells. And it can be quite rapid uh, responses as well compared to other types of treatment. Okay, and you mentioned trials. That was mm -hmm. actually a question that came in. Um, are there any myeloma clinical trials underway right now? Yeah, so there are actually around the country, there are tons of uh, clinical trials with CAR T cell therapy. Here at UT Southwestern, we have a few different ones that are open right now. Um, <clears throat> and one of the things that we've seen, you know, we just finished enrolling on one of the trials, um, and a couple of the trials so far have shown that even though patients are having beautiful responses and they're lasting, you know, one or two years, and some, some of the patients may still be in remission after a couple of years, many of the patients seem to be relapsing within a couple of years. Mm -hmm. And so we're trying to see if we can improve upon that. And instead of waiting until several years into their treatment after multiple lines of therapy and maybe their T cells aren't as functional, um, we're trying to see if we can move that closer uh, earlier in the lines of therapy. And so, for example, right now we have a trial looking at uh, third line treatment of myeloma and second line uh, treatment so of multiple when myeloma. When you say um, second line and third line, you're meaning they mean they've they already, they've relapsed already failed something uh, else. Once more. or twice okay. already, okay. right. And then, so that's exciting, that's ongoing. We don't have any data, and if that's going to improve things, but that's, those are, have just started. And then possibly even more exciting, uh, we have a trial that will be starting um, later this year looking at frontline or first-line therapy with CAR T cells for patients with myeloma that have high-risk chromosomes. Wow. Yeah. So those patients with the high-risk chromosomes, t on average, relapse faster and don't respond as well to standard therapies. And so instead of the stem cell transplant, would be going straight to CAR T-cell therapy to see if that improves their outcomes. Okay, so how would you determine if someone was eligible for that first line or second line treatment <coughs> versus you know, somebody that might come in after doing several rounds of chemo, et cetera? Yeah, so each trial has a long list of inclusion and exclusion criteria. So right. we have, part of the thing is if, if the patient's interested, um, you know, they can either send us a message or um, have their doctor make a referral. We can then have our clinical trial screener evaluate the, the situation to see if they would fit the criteria for these trials, okay. which will be different between the different trials. Okay, okay. Um, well, we have another question, and it's what makes UT Southwestern Simmons Comprehensive Cancer Center unique in providing treatments for these specific cancers? 
Yeah, so um, as far as UT Southwestern being unique, I mean, we're helping to pioneer CAR T cell therapy for myeloma in the region. Also, we have the only two dedicated myeloma only, or I should say plasma cell disorder only specialists. Um, so to get that, you'd have to go to other regions outside of here. Um, and basically because of all of the trials that we can offer and um, experience, I would say it's, uh, it's the, the other thing is even if patients don't get their treatment here, um, even if they can get an opinion from a myeloma specialist, whether it's from us or another center with a myeloma specialist, uh, I would say it's important to get input from a specialist that sees a lot of myeloma. Now, if their oncologist sees a lot of myeloma, that's fine. They don't necessarily have to see someone that just sees myeloma. But if they are out treated out in a community where their physician may only see a few myeloma patients, then uh, one of the other services we can provide is um, second opinions and consultation regarding treatment options that we can then relay to their local doctors. Okay. Um, well, we have another question here, and it's what other types of cancers do you treat? Yeah, so the three main uh, cancers, which uh, as I mentioned, I only treat plasma cell dis disorders, so the main one would be multiple myeloma. Okay. The other two main type of cancers that I treat are called Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia, it's a mouthful, um, <laughs> and systemic amyloidosis. Um, so Waldenstrom's is a cousin of myeloma. It's also a bone marrow uh, cancer of cells that are in between B lymphocytes and plasma cells called a lymphoplasmacytic lymphoma is the other name for it. And so those patients have kind of plasma cytoid cells that, that secrete a monoclonal um, immunoglobulin called IgM. So most patients with myeloma have IgG or some IgA, whereas in Waldenstrom's it's usually IgM. And that IgM is about five times bigger than IgG, and that can cause sludging of the blood even with um, not any more cancer cells than you would see in myeloma because of that large... Um, protein uh, levels in the blood, and that can cause stroke-like symptoms. They can have IgM that binds to nerves and cause neuropathy. They can have anemia. So those patients are treated uh, in our clinic routinely. And then one of the most dreaded complications of a plasma cell disorder would be amyloidosis, where the proteins that are being made by the myeloma um, don't just um, get cleared out by the kidneys, but they actually deposit in the organs and misfold and cause these deposits called amyloid, um, where, whereas that amyloid can deposit in the heart or the kidneys or any mm -hmm. organ and cause heart failure, kidney failure. And so those patients um, can be quite sick and uh, require a lot of specialized care um, and often will include a uh, proteasome inhibitor like bortezomib and the stem cell transplant. Okay. Okay. Well, we have um, just a few minutes left now, so make sure to submit those questions if you have them. Um, we do have a nice comment here from Olga, um, and they say, Dr. Anderson is the absolute <laughs> best, all capitals. <laughs> Thank you, Olga. Um, we think so, too. Um, so what else do we need to know about myeloma that we haven't touched on or any of the treatments that you would want patients to know <coughs> or referring providers to know? Yeah, so I, I would say the biggest thing to know is the, the treatment of myeloma is rapidly evolving. Um, every month it changes. Um, so and that's hence part of the reason why you need someone that has a lot of myeloma patients and keeps up with all the latest changes because it does change rapidly. Many trials are ongoing and the, the, the standards of care change every few months or at least every year. Um, and that we do have a lot of hope. You know, these patients have a lot of treatment options these days, and many of them are living many years. A lot of patients were getting their remissions to last so long that we can basically call, uh, call myeloma a, a chronic condition like high blood pressure, diabetes, okay. that we can keep under control with these medications. Um, and uh, so that gives a, a lot of hope. So it's it, even though you have a quote cancer, it's not really the immediate death sentence that a lot of people think it would be. It, a lot of patients do quite well uh, with their myeloma treatment and my goal is to make sure that if they died it was from something besides the myeloma. Okay, okay. Um, let's see here. We do have another question that just came in. Um, 
Actually, a comment, another positive uh -oh. review um, from Tanya. Living with myeloma five years and Dr. Anderson is the reason. He is an amazing doctor. Thank you. We love to hear that. Um, all right, well, with all of that said, uh, I, think, I think we'll wrap up now. Um, this chat will be available right here um, and also on our YouTube page later. So make sure that you share this with anybody that you think needs it. Um, if you do have questions we couldn't get to or if you're tuning in later, make sure to submit those in the comments questions and, or in the comment section, pardon me, and we will forward those on to Dr. Anderson and try to get back with you. Um, but thanks again for joining us and thank you for all of your wonderful questions and we'll see you right here next time.